Well, you know, the best way to understand what it's like to be a kid with epilepsy is to get to know them. Now, you've met Mackenzie and Whitney. Now come visit a group of teenage girls with epilepsy who meet every month with a mediator to talk about their lives. When I started having my seizures in school, that's when I really started getting worried. I'm like, oh my God, Mom, I'm scared. It's a lot for somebody that age, because um, you know, that's the age of 13 where they're getting tortured. Everybody gets tortured when they're in junior high school. And on top of that, they have seizures in school. So you can only imagine what that's like. I've had three seizures in my school, mm. two last year, and one this year on the first day of school. But sometimes when I get to seizures, I be like, oh man, I don't like it at all, but it's just something that you gotta deal with. Uh, it was in the homeroom, and everybody looked at me when I fell off my seat. I went to camp, and I was like, had a drop seizure, mm -hmm. and I was like, I can control this, I can control this, and then, <laughs> I'm feeling great, and then out of the blue, I get a seizure. And then I'll start crying, I will. I'll start crying, because it's so frustrating. You think, oh, I'm gonna feel good forever, and then, <laughs> boom, you get the seizure, and it's like, just, it makes me insane. It was like, what's wrong with me? I have epilepsy, I didn't know none of you guys. I was like, I felt alone, 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 like, Am I the only one who has this or whatever? Do you know that everyone knows me now as the epilepsy okay, girl? Yeah. I'm the only person in that school who has epilepsy. And it bothered me, but after a while, I kind of got used to it in a weird kind of way. I got used to it. Unless you have epilepsy, you truly can't understand what you go through. And a lot of them, their friends are no longer their friends because they don't accept it or understand it. Like, have to mention that we have epilepsy if we date. Why not? Of course not? you should. If he can't accept you for who you are, yeah, then I know, why? But why do we yeah. have to mention it? We're on a date. We're supposed to have a good time. I don't want to talk about my we epilepsy. We have a good time. It comes up in conversation. It's Inevitably, if you're, if you're so on a good date. So how's life? Oh, I have epilepsy. <laughs> I have epilepsy. <laughs> not like that. Well, you guys are saying, oh, boy, the boys don't like me because they don't like any of you guys because you have epilepsy, and I think that's total bull. I think it's in your head. All kidding aside, I never had a problem getting a boyfriend because I don't care. Like epilepsy is is this part of much part Except, of my life. I have so many other things no, going on. I but really, the, but what's the the, the thing is like once they find you. out you have epilepsy, it's like that now oh. everyone is asking me, including my my uh, principal. How are you? How are you doing? I hate that. I'm like, I, I, fine! I, I, I'm here! <laughs> I'm fine! Because we like to have fun. We like We're to dance. People. Yeah. But yeah. we just have seizure disorders, that's all. But we're still normal. Right, we're just dealing yeah, with our problems. Everyone no has one's perfect. problems. Yeah. And you should give them respect because they deserve as much respect as anyone else does. Oh, God, you're scared. <laughs> Where's Jenna? She's right. <laughs> what a terrific group of girls. And Kelly Lerner, the group's mediator, is here in the studio today. And we're so glad, Kelly, that you're here. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming. You know, you've been through a lot. And um, it's obvious that you've come through and you're doing very well. What's it like for you to have epilepsy? Um, well, first of all, I want to mention it's very individualized. Um, as a kid, um, I'd get seizures where I'd smell things, um, see things, um, stare off into space. Um, as a teenager, I started getting drop seizures, um, which was really scary. And then as an adult, I started getting clonic, um, tonic-clonic seizures. Um, I'd wake up, didn't know where I was, who I was. Um, and I found it was more difficult for me in social situations. Again, as a child, um, kids would make fun of me. My parents didn't understand. There was a tremendous amount of denial. Um, teenager, kids would freak out. I lost a lot of friends. Yeah. College, um, everybody's drinking, staying out late. I couldn't drink because of my medication. Right. Um, and I couldn't stay up all night because I would get a seizure. Mm -hmm. um, as an adult, I had problems when I graduated uh, from college because I'd have a seizure at work. Next thing I know, I'd get fired. Right, right. 
So, so this really impacts just about every aspect of your life on yes. some level. On Wh some level. Whitney, does this kind of sound familiar to you? Yes, it does. Yeah. What, how have how have you experienced uh, epilepsy in your life? What how has it changed things for you? It's hard. I mean, you know, yeah, it does a like, lot of things. I sleep a lot, yeah. and I don't go out as often as mm -hmm. my friends do. But well, you know, the thing that I'm struck by that I don't know that people necessarily pick up on is that when you have this disorder, a seizure could happen at any time, and that is very scary to think that at any moment, at any time, this thing could happen. You know, I've put patients on medications where the side effect were possible seizures, and they've not been able to take the medication out of fear that this could happen from something that they're taking. In your case, there's nothing you can do. Even when you take medication, sometimes you can have a breakthrough seizure. If you're off the medication, you can. Yeah, that's why you really need to have self-confidence um, and feel like, you know, you're not worried about it. I've said before, um, my life is like a pie and my epilepsy is about this, this much part of the pie because I have so many other wonderful things going on in my life. Yeah. Kelly, I know that as you get older, it's only perfectly natural to think about dating. How did you deal with dating? Were you scared to date? Um, actually, I wasn't. Um, through my parents and friends, I gained the confidence um, to do a lot of things, including dating. Um, my parents helped me live a normal life. So I'd go out on a date with a guy, and I would just tell him. And if he had a problem with it, bye bye So um, it's up to the individual person and how they approach it as far as whether or not they're going to have successful relationships with men. Um, I personally think it's okay to be honest, or you should be honest. Whitney, how do you feel about dating? And I know your mom is here, but tell us the truth. <laughs> um, actually, I don't have a problem about dating. I date um, all the time. I go out on weekends, and I have guys all over my house and stuff. But so you're not scared today? No, not at all. And I when you go out, do you tell the guy that you're out with? Yes, that you they have know I have epilepsy, but it doesn't bother them. Well, Erica, we've talked a lot about the uh, stigmatism, the ostracism, how uh, often in school children can be very cruel. And a lot of what kids do in school, they take the lead from their teachers and school administrators. What do they need to know about epilepsy as they interact with other students who don't have it and also kids who do? Teachers and school administrators really need to understand what's going on with that particular child. What that child needs as far as extra help, if they do need any extra help, if they need to rest after having a seizure, and also what the medication might do to their behavior or their academic performance. And again, as Kelly said, it's very individualized. Sure. So talk to the parents, get more information from the doctor if you can, and keep that communication line open. Yeah. Did you find, Kim, that that was something that you had to do with uh, Mackenzie and also with your, your other daughter, Whitney, at school? getting them involved, knowing what was going on with your children? Yes, I always let them know ahead. I've been in school many times. Um, with Whitney, it was difficult communication. You do need to keep that open, yeah. and it's a place to start. It doesn't always work. Yeah. Um, Whitney did need more services that were not available to yeah. her. Right, but you were an active parent, and that's, that's active, what's so important. And you have to keep fighting yeah. for your child's education. Right. They deserve an education sure. like anybody else. And, and they can be successful in school. Right. Um, but you may need extra help with that. Well, we promised you earlier that we'd show you what to do if someone is actually having a seizure. Obviously, it depends on the kind of seizure, but the steps are pretty simple and common sense. Now, for a partial seizure, the kind where the person seems kind of confused, stay calm, face the person, stay in front of him, right in his line of sight, so that if you startle him, uh, when you speak to him, he won't turn. Also, speak in a calm and soothing voice. It's really important to do that. Stay with the person until he can tell you his name and seems to understand what's going on. And for a grand mal seizure, it's very important that you do the same thing, but also don't hold the person or restrain his body movements. Turn him onto his side and remove any glasses or loosen any tight-fitting clothing around the neck and put something soft under the person's neck or cushion their head on uh, the lap. And uh, also it's really important that you not force anything into the person's mouth because there's really no danger of anyone swallowing their tongue and that's an old myth. And you could really hurt someone by putting something into their mouth. So it's very important to just stay calm and to just do all of those things. Um, let's uh, talk to uh, Dr. Moshe about uh, what's on the horizon. You're a researcher and you're involved in what we're trying to get down the road for seizures. What's, what's going on in research? A lot of things, a lot of lot of things. The main thing is that we're trying to understand what causes seizures so we can design treatments to address it just in the beginning. 
and then we try to understand what are the consequences of the seizure so we can stop them, then that may require different medications. Yeah. And finally, we try to develop new ways of giving medications that produce no side effects. The idea is no seizures, no side effects, normal life, no stigma. Yeah. And that's part of the research is also involving understanding the stigma and teaching other people how to avoid it. Yeah, and you know, that's, that's the real goal, right. to control the seizures without the side effects. And the side effects can sometimes, some patients say, is actually worse than having the seizures. Actually, not control, cure. Yeah. Cure. We're going for the cure. Well, control is not good enough. We well, can control a lot of decisions. <laughs> we go for and it. we certainly hope that yeah. you accomplish that. I know everyone uh, does. Um, Kelly, I know that recently you got married. What are your plans for the future, and does that include children? Absolutely includes children. We're uh, very much looking forward to that. Um, as a person with epilepsy, I do have to take precautionary measures. Um, I'm on folic acid. Um, and other medications that will uh, give me the help I need so I don't have seizures. Although it's possible that I could, um, but I'm not afraid of that. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready, I'm excited, and whatever comes my way, I'll deal with. Kelly, what do you think is the most important thing for people to get out of this, this show about epilepsy? Um, that we've been discussing how hard it is in the struggle. Um, but there are positive aspects as well. It teaches you um, how to have compassion for other people who are going through similar things, whether it be diabetes or, or cancer. Um, and I think that there's a lot of self-awareness and um, it teaches you to have self-confidence. Yeah, yeah. Kim, as a parent, that's gone through this once, now going through it again, and there are parents watching who have kids that are in the same situation. What do you want them to know? What's important for them? Well, you want a happy, well-adjusted child, and I think you, ha you sometimes tend to be overprotective, and you can't be. They're normal children. They can do normal things. Whitney's a competitive swimmer. She works, she drives. Um, you have to let your children go and lead their life right. like a, you know, and not put a big any other child. Them where they can't right. do anything because they, they're still kids. They, and they are. Still need they're to still have kids, a life. and they still need to do what every other child needs to do. Yeah, and they're going to do it anyway. Whether yes, you yes. Or not, right? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, if you'd like more information on epilepsy, you can contact the Epilepsy Foundation. Their website is epilepsyfoundation.org. The phone number is 1 800 332 1000. Thank you all so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate your expertise. I, I know this is going to make a big difference in the lives of so many people. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time on Keeping Kids Healthy.